Hey friends, this is Mrs. Fulfi from our Half Acre Homestead with a tea break. Ah, finally, finally, somebody's coming to do trees. Last winter, around February, I put it out on Facebook in my local area that I needed somebody to take down some trees and cut them up and mulch the brush. And I got one person to actually, well, but this year I started right away. I said, look, this is what's going on. And I put up a picture of my pool with the tree broken, the fallen tree on it. And I said, I got like five to eight trees that need to be taken down. There are one, two, three, four, five, six that have to be taken down. And then there are probably four more I want taken down. And so I've I finally got somebody to come back and say, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Somebody's coming next week, but the person, the first person who shows up, and gives me a decent quote, that they're the one who gets the job because I'm not messing around, right? So Buddy showed up yesterday and he said, yeah, we'll get some clear weather. I said, well, I got to do nothing till the end of the month. And he said, doesn't matter. If we get some clear weather, you figure out what trees you want. And I said, well, there's that one, that one, that one, that one. The two back there, the one behind my house, the one overhanging the power lines. And the one, uh, the dead spruce up against my hydro line coming in to my house. So, and most of them are hardwood. Like there is one, two, three dead spruce out of maybe 10 trees. The rest are like basswood, maple, um, and poplar. Poplar is the poor man's hardwood, but, but there's birch too, right? Like poplar's kind of like birch. It's like a cross between hardwood and softwood. It burns real quick, but it burns real quick, right? It's it's fine for daytime, but nighttime you want a nice big chunk of oak or maple or, you know what I mean, or birch to, to keep the fire going through the night. So he said apparently that, uh, you know, whenever there's good weather, he can just come in and start dropping trees. You know, and uh, he gave me, it would be a crew of three men and it's an hourly rate. And uh, and I said, okay, I can fit that into my budget, right? So I'm going to get take full advantage because he said from what, how he pointed out to him, which was about five trees, he said, oh yeah, this is, this is only a couple hours work. And he told me his hourly rate and I said, really? I said, okay, well, then I want more trees taken down. Now, folks, I don't take trees down Hegley Pegley. I only take trees down if they are an issue for my, our, our safety. Like we had that big storm that knocked that tree down. And then we had the other spruce, the top, the dead spruce on my driveway, the one closest to the house, the whole top of that tree snapped off in a windstorm and, and hit my bay window. Thank God the pear tree was in the way because it only got one branch hit it. The pear tree stopped the top of the tree from, from hitting it. And then my, my snow plow man, Jimmy, came along and he was plowing snow and he went, ah, I didn't do that. I just shoved it right into the ravine. <laughs> but so this is the plan. Um, I know I'm talking a lot about this, but I, this is year two. I've been trying to get this done. And the plan is they're going to come in and they're going to drop the trees they're going to cut off the branches, like, you know, nothing that's, bur anything that's not burnable. They're going to, and put it in a brush pile at the back, back of my driveway where I'm building up the ravine, right? Right? The rest, he's just going to, they're going to cut up into manageable size pieces so and pile them so that how we can cut them and split them this spring. Um, if they, and some of these trees are dead, which means they're, they're firewood standing, right? They're standing firewood. But the, the green ones, like the maples and stuff, they'll have to age another year before we can burn them. So it's, you know, it's a lot of wood. But hopefully the two big maples out back that we can never get to to tap anyway, one is leaning over my greenhouse chicken coop. 
And yes, it's a chicken house green. It used to be my chicken coop. Now it's a greenhouse. And it's going to be a chicken coop partially again this year. I'll tell you that in a minute. And so what I'd like to do is have those two maples taken out that are threatening the greenhouse. And then take the roof panels off the chicken coop and put clear ones on too. So that we have lots of more greenhouse room. So... Um, I talked to Stephanie today from Let's Homestead Instead, and hopefully we're going to be getting uh, a few chicks and turkey poults from her when she orders. I just got to convince Howie to set up the greenhouse for them. So, and we're going down to Cousin Angie's in the next couple of weeks sometime, so you'll get some video from there, but Howie's helping her... Uh, put up a wall or something or tear down an old wall and put up a new one or something. I don't know what they're doing. So, uh, Briar came this weekend and he washed my floors, bathroom, hallway, living room, dining room, kitchen. He cleaned my cupboards. And so I'm really grateful. Oh, and I've ordered a spray arm for my dishwasher because I need my dishwasher. But I realize now I probably need a an upper spray arm as well. So, but they're $68 for a, a knockoff. So it was 68 bucks for a lower spray arm from Amazon. Because I cannot navigate the Whirlpool website. It's just nuts. So as you can see, I'll show you. These plant lights are doing really well. The plants, these ones are harder to, to get moving. We, but you see, look, at there's already, um, can you see that? I can't know if you, there's already new leaves coming. So I made the mistake of leaving these too long. And that means they need a lot, a lot of water. Even though the, the, moil, the soil feels moist or it feels like it's got water in it, they need water, water, water because they're growing roots. It, it, you're not, I'm not starting them in water. Therefore, when they get started in soil, they need lots of water. So, but it, it's looking awesome. And I love these plant lights. I'm going to be ordering more. The plant lights you just saw are these. And they're bendable and they clamp on a table and they have light cycles. And oh, there's that one that's coming out again. Um, so I, I've ordered, I tried to get a hold of the company and uh, I tried to get a hold of the company that makes these to swing a deal, but it doesn't seem to work. Like it's one of those things where it's. Every time you, you go to the company name and they make everything, right? But I've ordered, I wanted to swing a deal and see if they would uh, let me promote them and, and give me a couple, but I didn't get any response back. So I've ordered four more of these because this year my light cage around my table is going to be no cage at all. I'm using all of these clamp lights. Howie is taking the tent and the hanging lights, which are always an issue for me. Like it's a lot of work putting up the cage and making it, making sure it doesn't collapse under the weight of, you know, the lights and all that stuff. So Howie's going to be taking the grow tent downstairs and he's got some project he wants to use it for. So that's fine. And uh, so soon we'll be seed starting. Speaking of which, I've had people email me and ask me exactly what, you know, I, I guess when I was on live stream, I didn't clarify about the seed exchange. Today is January 9th. You'll be getting this on January 10th, my birthday, but I'm taking the day off. The seed exchange, right? I've had people email me and say, okay, how does this work? And it's like, I've explained it a couple of times, so I'm going to explain it one more time. And then I will put the email addresses in the description box below this video. The cutoff date to get your address, your name, your address, and your growing zone to me is January 14th. So you're running out of time. It's four days left. Okay. 
I will leave the emails in the description box below this video and here's what you want to do. Now this is what you need to know if you are going to commit to the, the Seeds of Hope Valentine Seed Exchange. The only reason we're doing a Valentine's one is because I was really sick when I was organ when I was sending out all the stuff for the Christmas one and I missed people. So this is the seed exchange. All right. USA has its own email address. Canada has its own email address. And Europe I mean like New Zealand Australia Great Britain Ireland Scotland whatever and here's what you do you go to that email address your email address for your where you live and you send me your name your address and your growing zone and then you commit to receiving five names and addresses addresses and growing zones and you're going to send out five different cards with a pack one packet of vegetable or herb seeds in the card we're recycling christmas cards into valentine cards so get crafty all right the cutoff date now you must commit to sending out five cards with five packets of seeds, okay? The cutoff date is January 14th. So that's the last day you can get your stuff in because on the 15th, I will be organizing everything else and I will be taking no more names. So that's what's going on. I'm going to be using a whole new light system for starting seeds this year. There's going to be some pantry pull meals, but nothing's really exciting. You're going to get either meatloaf or, you know, because I've got like three more meatloafs in the freezer. Let me know if you want a one chicken, how many meals can we get video. Let me know and uh, I will start one. Okay, but it's going to take a few days because we have to make different meals out of one chicken. Anyway, that's what's going on. I just felt like, you know, I wanted to come in and say hi because I know a lot of people from our Half Acre Homestead do not like live streams. So I like to keep up, you yeah, updated with the tea break now and again, now and again. And that way I'm not going squirrel and getting distracted during a live stream, right? So Mrs. Wolfie, our Half Acre Homestead saying, I love you. It may be January, but it is a new year, and spring is coming. Take care. God bless.